Recently, BenQ have been creating a series of desktop monitors aimed at a specific demographic – software developers. One of these monitors in this series is the one that I have right here, the RD320UA, which I've been using as my main monitor for the past month now. As it says on the box, the marketing around this product is that it's the best monitor when it comes to programming. But what exactly makes that the case? Well, initially when BenQ asked if I wanted to do a review, I wasn't that interested, as I already had a 27-inch 4K monitor that I was perfectly happy with, one that I had been using for about five years. However, once BenQ started to give me more information about the features on this monitor, I began to change my mind and decided that I wanted to give it a go. As it turns out, I'm really glad that I did, as it's easily become one of my favourite monitors that I've ever used. Before I jump into why, let me give a quick disclaimer. The BenQ RD320UA was sent to me for free for the purpose of doing a review. However, this video isn't sponsored and no money has changed hands but I do get to keep the monitor. Additionally, BenQ haven't reviewed this video, and they have no idea what I'm going to say, although they did ask for some initial feedback on what I thought about it, and I told them that I really liked the monitor. As for the monitor itself, it's available on their website using a link found in the description down below, and retails for $699, which personally, I think is good value for what it provides. But this is on the higher end of the spectrum when it comes to monitor pricing. So if you are interested in this monitor, make sure to do your own research about whether or not it's right for you. With that out of the way, let's talk about why I not only like the RD320UA, but why it's now become the main monitor that I use. To start, it has an absolutely fantastic screen perhaps the best I've ever used for coding, which is obviously a really important factor when it comes to a desktop monitor. The screen itself is a 32 inch display with a 16 by nine aspect ratio of 3840 by 2160 and has a refresh rate of 60 hertz, which is plenty enough for me as I'm not really much of a gamer. For the full list of specifications, you can find this in a link in the description down below. What makes this screen perhaps the best I've ever used is its nano matte panel which not only provides great clarity and sharpness when it comes to text, but it also does a fantastic job at reducing both glare and reflection. Honestly, it kind of feels a little like magic. Showing the level of clarity is kind of difficult to do on camera, so instead I've taken some high-res photos of some code on the screen that are linked down below if you want to view these yourself. Additionally, I've also been taking photos of code on this screen for the past month now, posting them onto Twitter, and I've actually received a couple of comments on how sharp the images look. As for the actual glare reduction, this one is pretty easy to demonstrate. For reference, here's me shining my flashlight on my old display. As you can see, as well as it being a little gross, you can also see that it's rather reflective. Now for comparison, here's me holding up the same flashlight against the RD320UA. As you can see, the glare is substantially reduced. Reduced. For me, this is a fantastic benefit, especially due to the amount of lights that I have in my office slash studio. The clarity of this display helps to reduce the amount of fatigue on my eyes when it comes to coding, which means I'm able to not only code for longer, but that it's more enjoyable to do so. In fact, maximizing enjoyment is something that I think is really important when it comes to your desk setup. And the RD320UA also brings a number of other features to help achieve this. The first of these is how well it works when it comes to a multi-machine setup. In my case, I actually use two machines when it comes to my work. The first of which is my MacBook Pro, which I use for anything related to video editing. The second machine that I use is my Linux workstation running Nix OS, which I use for coding and pretty much everything else. In order to maximize my productivity, I need a solution that allows me to switch between these two machines in as frictionless way as possible, which luckily for me, this monitor actually provides, as it has a built-in KVM switch. The way that the KVM switch works is actually rather intuitive. The monitor itself acts as a sort of USB hub with four downstream USB connections that you plug your peripherals into. Three of these are found underneath the monitor on the right-hand side, which has one Type-C USB connection and two Type-A's, as well as an audio jack. 
Then there's one USB-C downstream connection found at the back. In my case, I actually plug both my keyboard and mouse receiver into the two USB-A connections found on the bottom right. Then I use the USB-C connection at the back to power the BenQ Screen Bar Pro light bar, which is a separate purchase, but one that I really recommend if you do decide to get this monitor. You can find a link to this and all of the other products that I mentioned in the description down below. Then for the actual upstream connections, the monitor supports two different machines in total. One via the USB 3.2 Type-B connection found at the back, which in my case is plugged into my Linux workstation, and one via the USB-C upstream connection, which I plug into my MacBook Pro using the cable that came with the monitor. The nice thing about this USB-C connection is that it happens to be all-in-one, meaning that it provides power delivery up to 90 watts, and acts as a display input source. When it comes to controlling the KVM upstream, this is done automatically when switching the display inputs. When selecting the USB-C display input, which again is plugged into my MacBook Pro, then this automatically sets the upstream to the USB-C connection. As for the USB Type-B upstream connection, this maps to the other three input sources this monitor supports, which are two HDMI inputs and one display port which is what I use for my Linux workstation. This means, in total, the monitor has four display inputs, which is plenty enough for my own personal needs. Whilst the KVM switching does work well when it comes to my own setup, I do wish there was the ability to configure this a little further. For example, it would be nice to configure the USB-C upstream to work with a different input source such as mapping it to the HDMI 1 input. Now, to be fair, you can manually override which KVM upstream you want to use by using the monitor's on-screen settings. However, this isn't the most intuitive interface, especially compared to what I was using for KVM switching before, which was an actual physical KVM switch, which only required a single button press in order to switch over. Personally, I'd love to see a firmware update where we could easily map the KVM switching functionality into one of the quick menus, but we'll take a look at those later. The only other real complaints I have when it comes to the KVM switching is actually due to the location of the downstream USB-A ports found underneath the monitor on the right-hand side. Whilst this makes these really accessible, the issue that I have is they're also rather visible, especially when you have a cable plugged in. Whilst this is a somewhat minor issue, given how aesthetically pleasing this monitor is otherwise, it just feels a little out of place. Fortunately, I did manage to find a solution to this, which was to use this right-angled USB-A connector that I found on Amazon. This allows me to somewhat hide the USB cable of my keyboard, which personally I find to be a little more aesthetically pleasing. Despite these two complaints, I still really do like the KVM switch functionality, and it's allowed me to deprecate my physical hardware switch, making my desk setup a lot more minimal. In fact, this is a common theme when it comes to this monitor, helping me to achieve an aesthetic pleasing desk setup. Perhaps the biggest way that it achieves this is through what BenQ calls the Ergo Arm, which is the monitor arm that comes included, provided you get the version that has a model number ending in A. BenQ do provide a version of this monitor that comes with a more traditional stand, which may be more appealing to some people. In my case, however, I much prefer to use monitor arms when it comes to my desk setup. In fact, for every monitor that I've ever owned, I typically purchase a third-party desk mount from Amazon. However, these are nowhere near the same level of quality as what's provided by the Ergo Arm. For starters, the Ergo Arm is calibrated for the weight of the monitor, which makes it incredibly easy to adjust its position, whether it's up or down, left or right, or even just rotating at 90 degrees, if that's more your thing. Additionally, the Ergo Arm itself comes with built-in cable management, which does a really good job of hiding all of the cables going to your monitor. If you're someone like me who has no idea how to manage cables properly, then having this feature is going to be well received. Whilst we're on the subject of cables, another small thing that I really like about this monitor is the power adapter for it is built in, meaning there's no external power adapter, instead just a single lead. This, again, is something that I really appreciate, especially compared to the adapter that came with my last monitor, which made cable management much more difficult. Whilst this is a really small and subtle improvement, to me, it shows the amount of thought that's gone into the design of this product in order to give it a really good user experience. In fact, this level of thought goes into another feature that this monitor has, one that not only makes the monitor enjoyable to use, but it's something I never really thought I needed. This is the Moon Halo, as BenQ calls it, which is the integrated ring light found at the back of the monitor, 
This gives the monitor a sort of halo effect when you turn it on, illuminating both your desk and the monitor's surroundings. Whilst the moon halo may feel like a bit of a gimmick, I've actually found that it does improve the overall aesthetic of my desk, especially when paired with the BenQ light bar that I mentioned earlier. The moon halo itself can be adjusted a number of different ways using the controls found underneath the function bar. These adjustments include changing the moon halo's brightness, its color temperature, or even the number of degrees that the halo lights up, choosing between either one of two options, 360 degrees, which will illuminate the entire ring, or 270 degrees, which excludes the bottom quadrant. Additionally, if the moon halo isn't your kind of thing, you can also just turn it off, which is useful in certain lighting conditions. In addition to the moon halo, one of the other big features that BenQ promotes about this monitor, especially as being for programming, are the built-in coding modes. These are either a dark or light mode, which you can toggle between and enable specifically. These coding modes are basically preset color themes that also increase the contrast of the actual display, making it really nice for working on code. To show what these look like, here is the dark mode theme when applied to my own terminal color scheme, and this is what the typical user theme looks like. As you can see, the darks are much darker, and the contrast is greater between the text and the background, helping it to stand out even more. In addition to dark mode, there's also a light mode coding theme as well, which I assume is better for anyone who uses a lighter color scheme. Personally, however, I don't actually use a light color scheme, so I haven't actually been able to test this. One interesting feature about these coding themes is that you're able to apply them to half the screen using a feature called Dual View Plus. This is a pretty awesome feature to have, as it allows you to constrain this effect to the side of the screen that your code is on, which is useful if you want to have the app or website that you're building on the right-hand side, ensuring that it's still color accurate. In addition to Dual View Plus, there's also another split screen feature that I personally have been making use of, although I do think this one's a little niche. This is picture by picture mode, which is where you split the screen in half and have two different display inputs at the same time. Personally, I actually find this feature to be rather useful, and I have it set up so that my Linux screen is on the right hand side and macOS is on the left. This allows me to record on Linux using my PCIe capture card, whilst still having my Elgato prompter running, displaying my script. The only criticism that I have of this feature is related to the KVM switch, as it's still rather difficult to switch between the two, even in this mode. As I mentioned before, I'd love to see a firmware update that added KVM quick switching to one of the two quick menus we have. Speaking of the two quick menus, the first of these is actually triggered by touching the center of the function bar, which brings up a menu to allow you to switch between the two different coding themes we saw before, as well as making additional adjustments to your user theme, such as the brightness, low blue light plus, and night mode settings. The second quick menu is activated by pressing in the rightmost button underneath the function bar, which is known as the function menu. By default, this brings up a menu allowing you to quickly toggle between the different input sources. This menu is able to be customized inside of the monitor settings, but personally, I find the default settings of switching inputs to be rather useful. So in my case, I've left them as the default. Of course, if there was the ability to add KVM switching to this menu, however, then I'd probably consider changing it. Whilst we're on the subject of controlling the monitor, it's worthwhile to note that it uses actual physical buttons found on the underneath of the function bar. Personally, I much prefer physical buttons compared to touch controls which is what I had on my previous monitor and always made it a pain to navigate. However, even though this monitor does have physical controls, I still find interacting with the monitor's on-screen menu is never really that great. Fortunately, BenQ provide another way to control this monitor that's much more intuitive through its companion software called DisplayPilot 2. This application allows you to adjust a number of different settings on the monitor itself through your operating system, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, whilst this application is awesome, it's only available for both macOS and Windows, and not available yet for Linux, which in my opinion is a bit of a shame. I actually reached out to BenQ to see if this was going to be available for Linux in the future. I've left their response on screen, but they basically said that they're researching and assessing feasibility when it comes to other platforms, including Linux. 
Regardless, if we open up this app and take a look at the menu, you can see it allows you to both toggle and customize a number of the monitor's features, such as toggling picture by picture, picture in picture, or even turning the moon halo on or off. One unique feature of DisplayPilot 2, however, is it provides the ability to control your monitor using keyboard shortcuts, which allow you to perform a number of different actions, such as switching between the different display inputs. Personally, I absolutely love this. Having keyboard shortcuts to control the monitor is what I would expect from something that calls itself the best monitor for programmers. Again, I just wish it was available for Linux, even in the form of an API. Additionally, when I tried to set up a Stream Deck to allow me to easily toggle between the two display inputs, I actually couldn't get it to work. For some reason, the DisplayPilot 2 software doesn't recognize the Stream Deck hotkeys as being a proper keyboard input. However, I'm sure there is a way to make that happen. Either way, whilst we're here looking at the DisplayPilot 2 menu, there's a couple of other features I think worth mentioning if you're considering this monitor, mainly focused around ergonomics. The first of these is Low Blue Light Plus, which, if enabled, will reduce the amount of blue light coming from your monitor, which should help you sleep better at night. This can either be controlled manually, allowing you to set the amount of blue light reduction that you like, or you can enable this to a circadian rhythm mode, which will allow you to schedule when this blue light reduction takes place. The second ergonomic feature that I really like is called Night Hours Protection, which automatically adjusts the screen brightness to the ambient light in the room. Another ergonomic feature that this monitor has is Eye Care Reminder Mode, which will encourage you to take a break after a certain number of minutes of looking at the screen, which you can configure to be either 30, 45, or 60. In addition to everything that I've talked about on this video, the monitor has a number of other features that I haven't really covered, mainly because I haven't used them enough to be able to share some thoughts. These include audio output through either the speakers or the headphone jack, as well as some additional ergonomic features such as BI Gen 2. If you're interested in what these features are, then I recommend checking out the resources linked down below. To me, it's pretty obvious that BenQ have put a lot of thought into this monitor, and I, for one, am really glad that they're designing a whole suite of these with programmers in mind. Personally, I'd love to see a couple of other changes geared specifically towards software developers, such as an API or an SDK that would allow us to interact with the monitors ourselves. And of course, software support for Linux. Other than that though, I really do like this monitor. And whilst I do have a couple of critiques that make it fall short of being the perfect monitor for programming, all in all, I do think it might be the best.